Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. So this video, we're talking about a company called Resonance Health. So you heard RHT. Now me and Resonance Health have a bit of history. In fact, it's uh, one of the companies that taught me, a, well not a nasty lesson, it's a very useful lesson in the importance of patience and how patience can lead to really good returns. And I think, I've learned through the years that patience is the most important attribute you can have as an investor, and I'll show you why in a minute or so. So Residence Health, what did they do last quarter? So they have a market cap of $70 million, which is quite a bit higher than when I held them. So yes, I'm an ex-holder of Residence Health. Um, and cash flow, uh, cash receipts uh, for last quarter, 941000 and they were cash flow positive in operations to the tune of 450,000, even take into account the government grants. So they did get 336,000 from JobKeeper. So even taking that into account, they were cash flow positive in operations. In fact, uh, I think, in fact, they, um, I guess you'll get to that to the next slide. So I'll just wait for that. Anyway, receipts history, a very slow upwards trend here. So this is a slowly growing company. And that's not a bad thing. Um, so, and the market did take a, a sudden like into Residence Health, and I'll show you a chart soon. So even though they have a very slow um, uptrend in cash receipts, sometimes the market can suddenly jump on a company like this, and you'll see massive share price appreciation, just when you least expect it. And again, I'm an ex-shareholder who didn't partake in that rapid expansion of the share price, because I was impatient. So some of the, the details in the report, $7.4 million in cash, so a very healthy balance sheet. Uh, one thing I was, yeah, didn't mention, I was going, about to mention, research and development projects and operations are fully funded by cash flow. That's very important. That means the chances of any capital raisings for working capital are going to be quite slim to nothing. So any, any um, capital raisings more than likely will be done to fund an acquisition if they do that. And they did have revenue of $1.2 million in the quarter, which is a little bit more than like 300000 more than receipts. Sometimes when you see that, it just means the next quarter might see a little bit of a, a bump in receipts because uh, revenue and cash receipts aren't identical because there's a bit of um, a lag between when you uh, have cash receipts and when you have revenue. Revenue is automatic. Cash receipts is when the money can come in the door. So if you have 120-day payments, cash payments, then yeah, the cash flow is going to be lagging the revenue by quite a bit. So sometimes when you see the revenue a little bit more than the cash receipts, that means uh, that's good things for the next quarter. Could be, not always. So this is their chart, the 42-month weekly, and I've got there where I sold out. Yeah, so three cents I sold out in June 2017. I thought it was quite smart. Uh, sold for a little bit of a profit, uh, nothing too much, but I uh, thought uh, I was so good. And you can see what happened um, from about, um, I think it was October 2018 to now. If I held on, uh, I think I bought something like $2.02, I mean 2.2 cents. So I would have almost uh, had a 10 bagger if I sold it at 22 cents, which I could have uh, definitely done that. So. This shows you just, um, some people say, uh, always take profits. So I followed that in this case. I took my profits like 30% or so, but I could have had 1,000% profits if I was patient. So um, always take profits is a philosophy that um, leads to you not gaining wealth. Uh, it means you don't lose money, but you don't gain wealth. And being patient will lead to um, wealthiness, I suppose you could say. So this is a uh, bullish signal. Uh, I see this sort of bullish signal all the time. It's an uh, increase in share price on a large spike in volume. Um, it's a very bullish sign. And we saw that sign in, it looks like uh, early December 2018. We had a bit of a signal in October that year, but that was um, sort of not a false signal, but it was sort of a harbing of a potential signal in the future. I always see this also. We have the one signal which failed, and then we have the bullish signal that doesn't fail, and we see the share price just rise from there on in. And a lot of investors are very shy, hesitant to buy in when the share price has risen by like that amount. That's almost like a 
100% rise in a, in, a, in a day. I think these are daily charts. In a day, and uh, they think uh, sort of recency bias plays a part here, where you think uh, the share price was at 2.5 cents a few days ago. Now it's 5 cents. Why would I buy in at that price? But you can see here why you would buy in. You get the share price increase on large volume. That's always a bullish sign. You see day traders starting to jump on, and sometimes you'll see the share price just rise because of day traders are jumping on. Then you get the day traders jumping on. Then you get the medium-term traders jumping on. Then you get the long-term investors jumping on. So it's all one big cycle based off this one day where the share price increases a lot based off uh, massive volume. It probably would have been some sort of announcement. Uh, maybe they had FDA approval or something. Um, I could go back in announcements, but um, that's what happens sometimes. So this is a bullish signal I see a lot. So that's all I've got on Resident Health for this episode. So it's a company I learned a good lesson about patience and remaining patience and always take profits, ignore that sort of line of advice and always be patient with your holdings. Actually, not always. Sometimes there is a time to sell. Um, but just because a company's in profits isn't good enough reason to sell. That's probably the best part of piece of advice I've ever been given. Just because it is in profit isn't enough reason to sell. You need other reasons to sell. So that's all I've got. Um, I'm not an advisor, so even though I've sort of given advice there, uh, don't follow my advice. Uh, make sure you seek out a professional advisor so you can follow their professional advice. So that's all I've got. Bye. See ya.